more. <laughs> oh, it's turning the wrong way. And that's it. And now we let this run for about 15 or 20 minutes. Therese, would you put that plug in the back, the bottom down there? There is a plug. Right there, yeah, that's it. And this, the only reason why we have this ring here is so it doesn't splash up. See how it splashes up and can damage like the stuff. Yeah, it smells like fish poop. There's a reason for that. Actually, what you're smelling is what's been caught in the line that's gone a little anaerobic because it's been a couple of days since we watered. Should have been watered yesterday. These are very dry. So that's, that smell is the hydrogen sulfide and the methane of the anaerobic process. Water every other day? Pretty much every day. But we, we, we weren't here yesterday and I didn't turn it over to anybody in the, on the team. You, you. Oh. So, Stay. so this, it's already starting to get wet. See that, how it's gonna seep up? If you look down into there, you can pick up anyone in, in the flow and you can see that there's, yeah, see the water? Yeah, so That's, it, it wicks up. Yeah. It just simply wicks up until after about 10 or 15 minutes, it's plenty of time for the flow to get to every single one of these sprouts and get them wet and they get a drink. And not only do they get a drink of water, they get a drink of nutrient-rich water. See how far it's gone. This water is filled with soluble nutrients. Jack's going to see how far the water's gone. No, it's gone there yet. Yeah, it's past. How long do you let him sit? 10, 15 minutes. And then you pull Half the plug. Half a day. It depends on when we remember to come back and turn right it off. Over there. We don't have this automated. Uh, we've kicked around the idea of automating it, but we really need to. This is a farmer shadow kind of thing. You know, this could be automated. We find that there's a lot of value in knowing what's going on. I've come out here in the middle of a drought and I found these sprouting tables covered with ants. If I had this on an automatic system, I wouldn't have seen that. They were up eating the seeds. So we worked on getting, see one of the beauties of this system is you can get rid of ants in the ground. You can, you can prevent them from climbing up onto your system quite easily. I use a mixture of borax and honey. I treat the ground. What was that you? Uh, it's borax or boric acid and honey. Equal parts or? Yeah, I just make a slurry and I mix it with water, especially when it's in a drought. They're desperate for water. Borax and honey. Is this, are these lights? Um, Pardon? Is there a function for these? Oh, the Christmas tree lights. Christmas. Thank you for asking. Yeah. The Christmas tree lights are to combat rose beetles or Japanese beetles or Chinese beetles. They go by all sorts of different names. But it's difficult here in Hawaii because we have such a large population of both Chinese and Japanese people that it seems quite rude to me to call them either one. They're also known as rose beetles. But given I have a daughter named Rose, even that's difficult. So, so what they are are a swarming insect, a swarming beetle that swarms at just after full dark for about two hours. They'll find, they will hatch out of the ground, they dry off, they fly around, they eat like crazy, they mate, they drop to the ground and lay their eggs. Then they fly off to another tree, swarm around that tree the following night. They, they have about a, I think it's about a three week life cycle. And they are prodigious eaters. That when you see skeletized leaves, you know when you see the outline of the the, 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 the skeleton of the leaf? Sure that, that is a rose beetle, or a Japanese beetle, or a Chinese beetle. They are doing 90% of the damage in the ground. What you are seeing above the ground is only 10% of the damage they are doing. The grubs live underground and eat the roots. So when you see them, there's a wonderful organic solution and that's low voltage Christmas tree lights for the first two hours after dark. Now these are on a timer. So for the first two hours after dark, these are on. And these down the middle are enough to keep them away from this entire sprouting table. What will happen is one, will, one beetle will cruise in here, drop down on to the surface, walk around and leave a trail of little tiny just stumps, tiny little nubbins. And you can see the, the path that they follow. They actually have laid eggs in the cocoa fiber. And we found the grubs when we harvest the lettuce. That's only happened a time or two. Now the grubs are those uh, 
you don't want grubs in your system, right? I mean, well, these you are. Can feed those to the fish. You could. Uh huh. But I, they probably sink too fast. We just, I just squish them underfoot. Okay, so we're going to do seed, um, seeding probably after lunch. I think we're gonna do fish now, so Robin and Melissa can. Fill